Today I've got three beautiful birdhouse pieces for you. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome. Today I am working with my friend Devin from Freckled Mom DIY. I'm going to have her links in the description box below because I would love for you to check out what she's doing. I've got a variety of birdhouses. I found this one at the thrift store. Love it. I got this one at Dollar Tree. And they have several different styles and this one was thrifted as well. You're gonna need to grab some stickers or embellishments. And I have these little thin wood chips. I'm gonna need some type of glue and then some stains and things like that. Number one is a thrift flip birdhouse. We're gonna start off with the one with the metal top. And I wanna cover that because I thought these little pieces of wood chips look very much like shingles. So I'm gonna try my hand at doing shingles. I have three inches here, so I'm just gonna divide this into three sections. Just marking it off with my ruler and then gonna turn my ruler to the side so I can make lines to make it easier to guide where I'm gluing down my little shingles. All right, so I'm just gonna use hot glue, but if you want this to be permanent or to put it outside, you're gonna to need to use a different type of glue. Maybe something like E6000 would be good. All right, so I'm just gonna show you how I do this. These shingles are not gonna fit exactly across the bottom, so I'm gonna to have to adjust it a little bit, but that is so easily done. They are so very thin that they just split when you press down on them. So I'm holding it on the underneath side and pressing down on the edge of that little um, tin there, and it just snaps right off the perfect measurement. How about that? You could also use popsicle sticks and cut those down if you wanted to, if you had some of the thin ones, and make shingles of your own. Now I'm going to go up to the next line. I'm going to go right under that line because I want to make sure that my shingle overlaps about probably an eighth of an inch over the bottom line. And I'm just going to alternate back and forth so that I have the broken shingle on opposite sides. So then I'm gonna glue that one down and continue along. Going on the top row, I want to make sure that that top row sticks up just a little bit over the peak. And then I'm gonna start on the other side. Now I use baby wipes with my antiquing wax just to give it more of a, um, I like to use this to distress. So I'm gonna use just a downward stroke here and just press that onto the wood and then drag it down. I'm going to do it on both sides and then continue to blend it and push it around until it is the the color and texture that I like. It looks old, it looks like it's been outside, and it looks weathered and I like that. I love rustic, cottagey, weathered looks. And I think that I accomplished that with this. What do you think? All right, so now I'm going to embellish it. My cord came from uh, Amazon, but you can get some now at Dollar Tree. I was so surprised. It's in the like the little floral or garden type section. So hopefully you can find some at your store. I think they come in a three pack, um, different types of these little cordings or trims, whatever you want to call it. And I'm just going to trim off here and there where I think it would look good. I didn't want to paint it because I really like the wood that is used on this birdhouse. I like the variation in the light and the dark, and you can see all the rings and lines. I think that's pretty. So there's one piece, and then I look at it, of course, from all angles, and I'm going to add some on the bottom and around the sides of the birdhouse. Be careful and make sure you protect your fingers. You can get those little finger protector little silicone tips at Dollar Tree if you're lucky. I have seen them there every time I've gone so fortunately my store stays in stock and they really do make a difference. But I got in a hurry and I didn't use them today. All right so I'm going to go all the way around and then tack it down in the back trim off what we don't need. And this is how it looks so far. You could of course leave it just like this if you like it. But I noticed that there's just a tad of a gap, of course, between my shingles and the tin roof that's underneath. So I decided just to use a little bit of jute and cover that gap up. Now, what you could do if you have a, like the glue guns that have the little detail tip on them, that would be perfect for this situation. 
and I don't have that so I did the best I could with my glue gun which I've always had you know pretty good luck with and I got a neat finish Decide, besides the fact that that's a really big gun it does give me a nice little finish trim it off on the edges where it's even and then this is how it's gonna look I'm cutting off my fuzzies some people use a lighter to kind of burn that off if you feel inclined you can do that so these cute little patches or I don't know what are these I don't know what they are but they're they're made of thread I'm gonna use this little bird here to go right over like he's sitting out there peeking in this house it's just so cute I've been waiting to use these little little bird patches for a long time and I think it's a perfect way to use it right here he looks like he belongs there what do you think I like it all right now we're gonna go on to number two which is another thrift flip birdhouse this is my big birdhouse and I mean it is big I decided to clean it up by wiping it down and then just sanding off the top of it and then all around the sides and the bottom just giving it a light sanding so that my stain will be even when I put it on I've got some this is like a, a wood stain and it is something that I got from plaid I am a plaid ambassador and it is in the color gray they do have a dark one too that's like a brown but I wanted to use the gray here don't be disturbed by the color when you put it on because it's not going to stay this way the longer you leave it on the darker it will be but I wanted mine to be more of just a wash so I'm just going to take a baby wipe which is fairly dry and I'm going to wash the rest of it off it gives a very subtle gray color or gray tint to the wood and I like that I like that here because I think it's gonna be really good for the technique that we're gonna use this is the most detailed of the three but I don't want you to be discouraged by the work that goes into it because believe me the results are gonna be so worth it all right and if you don't have a good thrift store and you don't have a place where you can find you know bird houses then if you want to buy something new or use something you already have in your yard take it down sand it and give it a little facelift so I'm taking a stencil brush here which has very stiff little bristles and I'm just dipping straight into that antiquing wax this is not watered down I went straight into it because I want this to be very rich and dark so that's what I'm doing and I'm just kind of stippling it down in all those cracks because it gives it a little more depth it makes the recessed parts actually look like they're deeper than they are and I like the detail of this for some reason it is giving me some serious mushroom cap vibes I like that do you see how it got kind of um, when I was doing it it got little splatters so I said you know what that's a little happy mistake that Bob Ross talks about I'm gonna go with it so I'm just taking a watered-down version of my wax and just kind of raking my finger across those stiff bristles and splattering paint all around it and I love the look of this I'm gonna fix my little bird perch just I wiped it down I had a little mess there just wiped it off the baby wipe it came off nicely and then fixed it back put some more color back onto it exactly where I wanted it to be and then just continued to go around here flicking that paint all over the place I'm redoing the bottom and I do have a little bit of a mess along the bottom my lines are not perfectly straight but I'm okay with that and I encourage you to be okay with that too because this is a rustic look and it really makes this birdhouse look so different than how I started that's the great thing about crafting there's no right or wrong right you just do what makes you happy and brings you joy and I always encourage uh, my viewers and subscribers to keep that in mind when you're crafting all right so these stickers came from Dollar Tree they have a bunch of these kinds they're kind of um, different styles but they're raised and I really I really enjoy the look of this and it fits perfectly around the little opening to the birdhouse is that not the cutest little cottage core birdhouse you've ever seen but wait it gets better I'm gonna take these little corner pieces and just kind of give it a little extra something 
you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I think this is really cute. And there's four, so it works great. I'm just going to use a popsicle stick so I can line it up and kind of get it, you know, not perfectly straight, but pretty straight. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And then so it's kind of framed out. The front of the house is framed out. And I like that. But you don't have to do it. You know, whatever you like. And there are ones that have keys on them and all kinds of stuff. So just be creative and, and do what feels right to you. Oh, isn't it a beauty? And then I thought, you know what? What would make this even more perfect is to give it a stand. Yeah, I'm going to give it a stand. So check out this candelabra or a candle stand or whatever you want to call it. Apparently it had a glass top or something on there, but anyway, I got it at Goodwill because it was broken. Apparently nobody else wanted it and I grabbed it. I'm giving it a good cleaning with a fresh baby wipe and then um, I'll show you. It's actually from Ikea. Is that not the coolest thing? Yeah. I'm just going to take the top of this fat, tall base and I'm going to attach it to the bottom of my birdhouse. And there's no wax on the bottom of the birdhouse because if you would have done that, um, it wouldn't stick very good, very good at all. So I'm just gonna hold it down until it gives it a minute to catch. Number three is our Dollar Tree birdhouse flip. This is so easy. This is probably the easiest one, but it, you know, it does have a little, little something to it, little technique, little effort. So I'm taking that same watered down antiquing wax and my brush and I'm just going to go over the roof. I'm going to give this a brown top. You don't have to do this. You can paint yours. You could use the solid wax technique like I used on the last birdhouse. You could even shingle this like we did on the first birdhouse. So see I'm having a hard time here with that wax so let me show you what I do here in a minute to get that trim nice and colored without flicking that paint all over the rest of my birdhouse because we won't be staining that we're going to be painting it and i don't want to make a mess waxy substances do not like to stick to paint so substances so i'm just going to take it on my finger and just rub it down into those little cracks what about that we're finger painting y'all finger painting and it does the trick it does perfectly I'm going around all the edges of that raw wood there to make sure that it's all covered up. And then the underneath part, we're just going to use paint for that. So I'm taking this light mocha, use whatever color you like, and three sides of this house and the underneath parts of the roof are all going to be covered with this mocha paint. Hey, if you enjoy budget-friendly DIYs, I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel. If you are from Devin's channel, I want to say a big welcome and thank you for coming over. I have known Devin for quite some time now on YouTube and on Instagram, and that's a hardworking girl right there. She has unique DIYs, and she's such a spiritual person. It's really uplifting to talk to her and follow her journey, so just be sure that as soon as you finish watching mine, you go over there and check her out. Okay, here are some rub-ons that I got from Dollar Tree. They also have a variety of really cute stuff depending on what style you like. And I know that I'm going to be using this, this transfer. I've used it on other projects and I will be using it again. I just kind of get an idea of which section I want to use. And the reason we painted that front part white is because I really want this to stand out. So I like the rose one, the rose section, and I'm going to be working with it. I'm just making sure that I have enough room here to put it on and then I'm going to take my little cutters here and just cut the little stem off. So the little part where they stand or the perch, I just removed it so that I could lay this straight down. But don't worry, we're going to put the perch back. We don't want the bird to be confused and not be able to get into its home. Alright, I'm using just a regular popsicle stick to rub this down. Don't worry if you did like I just did and pressed it down and made it kind of messy because you can fix it so easily with these stamps or these um, rub-ons. You can't take it off once it gets on there, in my experience anyway, but you can certainly fix it. So what's left on there are a couple of extra leaves and things that didn't transfer. Just overlap wherever you need um, a piece. And look at that. I totally covered up my mistake there. I'm going to take an awl 
and just dig down in here and make it flat, clean it up nicely, and decide what kind of perch I want to use. So I thought, you know what, a little button and a bead would be perfect here. I've glued down the button and now I'm just gluing the little, it's kind of an oval shape oblong, you see there? Right down in the middle of the button and how cute is that? I think that is precious. I'm gonna take my little heat gun here and it came from Arteza. If anyone is curious, I love it. And I'm going to peel off my sticker. Oh my gosh, game changer, changer for sure because it saves me a ton of time not having to scrape. This is just a little piece of stuff that I found at Goodwill and I save these because you never know when you might need a base or an extra piece for something, you know? And it's gonna be perfect as a base for this and it's gonna be a little razor or a riser and it's just gonna lift it up and look at that, it's perfect. Here are our three birdhouses. I'd love it if you would give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I would love to know if you have any intentions of making any of these little birdhouses. Which one's your favorite? Which one do you think that you will try to make? They're easy, you know, with summer and spring here and coming up, it's a perfect time to get in your yard, to get on your porch. You know, if it's still snowy where you live, bring some of these things to life in your house. Get inspired, be warmed up. I got lots to show you and so does Devin. So be sure you subscribe so you do not miss anything that we have coming. Any links that I mentioned will be in the description box below. Thanks to all of my subscribers. Go see Devin. Remember what I say, I believe in you. I really do. We're all creative in our own way. There's no wrong way of crafting. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you again. Bye.